Many thanks to Jerb, Jaren, DZ Podcast, Taggy's Tag West, That One Random, and Great Poncho for making this video possible. DZ Patch 1.14 re added four new traps, allowing us to AFK to catch food again, along with the ability to craft the most unforgiving trap in DZ, the Trip Wire Trap, which I'm sure many of you have a lot of questions for to not be a victim of how incredibly sneaky this very deadly trap is. So, in this video, I'm going to be sciencing like usual to help you make the most of these traps to use them to their full potential. The four re added traps are the fishing net trap, the small fishing trap, the snare trap, and the tripwire trap. Starting with the fishing net, it can be crafted with netting found on the coast or by dismantling ghillie suits, and metal wire is found in industrial locations. This trap can be placed in any water source in the game, but in order to deploy the trap, you need to be stood in the water. And FYI, it doesn't matter if the trap is above the water like this. If you place a trap in the sea, it has a 15% chance to catch mackerel, and if you place it in a river or a pond or a stream, it has a 15% chance to catch carp. Mackerel is slightly better in terms of calories. You can increase your catch chance from 15% to 85% if you add a worm to the trap, which is well worth doing as it only requires a sharp tool and looking at a grassy texture to get a worm. Another reason to use a worm is that each time any of the four traps in this video triggers, it will lose one quality level and cannot be repaired. So adding a worm helps battle this decay mechanic. As soon as you deploy the trap, it will begin counting down from a random number which is generated from between 15 and 25 minutes. Now in order to catch anything at all with this trap, you will need to be at least 25 meters away from the trap, but this doesn't impact this timer. This means you can stand right next to the trap for 15 to 25 minutes, then go outside of this 25 meter range, and all of these traps will trigger at once, because their timers will be zero. Alternatively, if you're not a RuneScape fishing bot, you can do normal stuff like loot a nearby town or watch all of my videos without ad blocker on while you wait. Because once triggered, the fishing net will stay there for 8 hours and if you catch something, what you caught will stay there for 4 hours and it won't become rotten before despawning. This is what a fishing net trap looks like when you've set it up and this is what it looks like when it's been triggered. Whether or not the trap catches something in these 15 to 25 minutes makes no difference, it will lose one quality level regardless of what happens, and no you can't dismantle the trap and put it back together to restore it to pristine, because the daisy developers are now anticipating our sneaky tricks. As a quick tip here, with these three traps, if you dismantle them you will keep the metal wire and or netting, but lose the wooden sticks, which means you can create several different traps from just one metal wire. If you catch a carp or a mackerel, they will become rotten in 1 hour and 40 minutes if you keep them in your inventory, so cooking them within this time limit is recommended to preserve them. The carp nets you 360 energy if you bake both of the fillets, and the mackerel is 480 energy, making the mackerel 33% more nutritious and worth catching if you do have a choice between pond fishing or river fishing and sea fishing. Now because the fishing net takes 15 to 25 minutes to maybe catch something, fishing is definitely a better choice if you want food quickly, but a fishing net allows you to be efficient to catch food while you loot a town for example, and you're not a sitting duck while you fish. Moving on to the small fishing trap, we can consolidate all of the stats from the previous trap because these stats are exactly the same, but it's crafted using a bottle and a knife and cannot be turned back into a regular usable bottle. I did try with duct tape too. The biggest difference is that you will catch sardines in the sea and the newly added bitterlings in rivers and ponds. Sardines cannot be used in the fishing net like they used to and both of these will make you sick if you eat them raw unless your immune system is strong enough. So again, sea fishing will catch you more nutritious food here with the sardines providing twice the nutritional benefits of the bitterlings when baked. Finally for the small fishing trap, when deployed it will lay on its side and when it has caught something it will stand up vertically. Two traps down, two to go, with the next one being the snare trap. This trap is governed by the same mechanics that the previous two traps are, but there are some additional features and stat changes when it comes to the snare trap. Firstly, to craft one, you will need a small wooden stick from a bush, and again, metal wire, which FYI cannot be substituted to barbed wire or rope for any of the traps in this video. Only metal wire can be used to craft the traps in this video. The snare trap can be placed almost anywhere, in a house, in a shed, on a shed, in a toilet, and even on the top of this truck here. So like the fishing traps, as long as the trap is deployed, it has a chance of catching something, even if the only access to this snare trap here is teleporting through a shed panel. So teleporting chickens are confirmed for 1.14. 
Again, like the fishing net and a small fishing trap, the snare trap has a 15% chance to catch something when you don't use bait. But with the snare trap, you have a choice of what you want to catch with your bait. For example, adding worms to a snare trap would give you an 85% chance to catch a chicken after 15 to 25 minutes, or adding fruit or vegetables would give you the same chance to catch a rabbit in the same time frame. The quality level of the fruit or vegetables when catching rabbits doesn't matter, but you can't catch anything with burnt or rotten fruit or vegetables. Even though you still can attach them to the snare trap, you won't get anything as a result. In fact, it seems to break the trap. This means that raw, boiled, baked or dried fruit and vegetables can be used to catch rabbits, all at the same speed that worms do to catch chickens. Beware with the snare trap that you need twice the distance away from it compared to the fishing traps to catch anything, so 50 meters away and you will catch stuff. When triggered, the snare trap wire will be in a different position than when it was set up, and again it will lose one quality level when it's triggered. If you catch and skin a chicken, it will give you two chicken breasts and two bones, while catching a rabbit with fruit or vegetables gives you two rabbit legs, ten bones and one rabbit fur, of which the rabbit fur can be turned into leather with lime. The chicken breast provides 50 extra energy compared to the rabbit leg and catching a rabbit requires you to use edible food too, making it a lot worse if you just want the energy benefits of using a snare trap. However, because rabbits give fur, this may be the preferred method to get leather when leather gear gets re-added. Finally, like the fishing traps, the trap will despawn 8 hours after triggering and if you catch something, it will despawn in 4 hours and won't become rotten. It won't become rotten in these 4 hours because it takes 6 hours when meat is outside of your inventory to become rotten. If you want to learn more about that, you can see this video. For now, the rabbit, chicken, mackerel and carp don't have decay textures on them, but when you do cut them open, you will get this rotten meat texture on them. The final trap on our list is the one you've all been waiting for, the deadliest trap in Daisy. And the reason it's deadly is for three reasons. First, it's almost impossible to see on some surfaces. Second, it will trigger the most powerful explosive in the game, killing all things in 10 meters. And the deadliest of all, once you set one up, it does not despawn for seven in real life days. So long that you might forget you placed it there and end up killing yourself with it a few days later, which I'm sure will happen to the uh, more special members of our community. The tripwire is crafted using metal wire again and two wooden sticks this time, losing one quality level every time that it gets triggered, and if it explodes, it will become ruined. It can be placed everywhere that the snare trap can be placed, almost everywhere at least, but it is a bit more difficult to place in some places due to its length. The tripwire works like a claymore mine in Daisy in that the hitbox to trigger the trap is positioned away from the player when you place it, but it is in the shape of a rectangle, not a cone. From testing, the 3D shape of the hitbox to trigger the tripwire looks something like this, which does travel through walls, bear in mind, and as a result can be triggered through walls too, unlike the bear trap and the landmine. Unlike the bear trap and the landmine though, the stance of your character and the speed of your character can determine if the tripwire will trigger or not. So when sprinting, running or sprint crouching in this rectangle area, the trap will trigger inflicting 5 shock damage and activating whatever you place in the trap. This includes but might not be limited to the full speed with a splint, the full speed while restrained and the full speed while holding a two-handed object. However, walking while stood up allows you to walk through the trap without triggering it, along with crawling, rolling and jumping as well as tap running like this. So basically, the only way to trigger the trap is by running, sprint running or sprint crouching, unless you trigger it with a two-handed weapon the same way you can trigger bear traps and landmines. If you damage the trap, you can ruin it and make it trigger, or you can destroy the object inside of the trap directly. Throwing something at a tripwire will not activate it, nor will opening a door into a tripwire, but vehicles will, but it doesn't seem to slow down vehicles at all, which is the case for the snare trap too. Infected in animals also trigger traps, which means if you set up a tripwire trap in a building, you can kill a large amount of infected as you open the door. Be aware, however, if you place multiple traps together, grenades will destroy other traps around it, ruining them and triggering them to cause them to explode too, so you can actually cause a chain reaction here. The items that can be placed inside traps are the two types of grenade, the flashbang, the smoke grenades and, surprisingly, the road flare. Triggering a grenade will kill you very quickly and as you sprint away very quickly too, or hide behind a surface that will protect you, just be aware that grenades can penetrate thin surfaces. To ensure your victim doesn't get away though if you are the one that's setting up the trap, you can set up a grenade to explode almost immediately after it's been triggered. To do this, you need to cook a grenade, so place it inside a cooking pot and light- 
The other way to cook a grenade is to unpin it, place it on the floor, and then immediately pick it back up and repin it as soon as possible. If you're not fast enough, you will die, so maybe practice with a flashbang first. Now if you have any idea how grenades work, this obviously isn't realistic, but the devs have said that they're fine with it working this way, so don't expect it to change anytime soon. Anyway, if you don't kill yourself by cooking the grenade, it will explode before the victim can react, and this also works for the flashbang. Unlike the grenade and flashbang, these smoke grenades will trigger immediately and the smoke travels through walls and can be seen up to 200 meters away. So they can be used for identifying player positions, but remember that infected and animals can trigger these traps too. The road flare works in much the same way that the smokes do, activating instantly and can be used to track player positions. Now the fact that tripwires stay active for 7 days means you should remember exactly where you place them because you may be on a different life in 5 days and accidentally kill yourself. The biggest reason this will be a problem though is because of how difficult they are to see especially at night. I did try several different techniques to try and identify them to make them easier to spot but the best I could do was protect a shadow at night on the tripwire which isn't very noticeable either. The only advice I can give you really is to check every single door frame as you go through it. Look down at the door frame, make sure there isn't a trap and don't shove yourself through doors that are closed because that's going to be the main reason that people die to tripwires, not being able to see the trap. Open the door, check for a trap, deactivate it. Deactivating a tripwire if you see one is very easy, simply pull the object out of the trap because you don't need to unpin grenades to put them inside traps so they're perfectly safe to disarm. However, using the pliers you can lock an item in place inside the tripwire preventing it from being deactivated at all. I did try with all the other tools in Daisy, but none of them worked to lock or unlock the tripwire like the pliers do. You'd have to get the pliers to unlock the trap to disarm it. The only other way to deactivate a trap that is locked with the pliers is to trigger it, but you can also just walk through it and be on your merry way. So to conclude, these free traps are a great way to get nutritious food with very little effort that makes metal wire more desirable and more consumable as an item. If you do have a choice though, the fishing net trap is going to be the best for catching food as it nets you the most energy. As for the very deadly and customizable tripwire trap, it is going to catch many a player off guard, which is an interesting topic to discuss because getting insta gibbed in any game isn't very fun. Should we have to check doorways? Should we be able to cook grenades? These are very important topics. Picks. I want to say a big thank you to everybody that supports my content, you guys are pretty epic and always remember that I'm not some all seeing, all knowing Daisy guru, I can be wrong sometimes, I do make mistakes, there's some things that I don't know. So always use the info in my videos with caution, especially when dealing with explosives. Thank you very much for watching, have a good day and stay awesome. <laughs>